All right. Good morning, everybody. I have uh, myself, Justin. I am the director of OSER Academy. I'm also a certified prosthetist with OSER Americas. We have Dr. Thorvalder Ingerson, who is the executive vice president of research and development with OSER. He's also the orthopedic surgeon that conducted the procedure on Gumi Olsen for the monotric sensor implants of his right transtibial residual limb. And we're going to interview these two gentlemen about their experience with this product and this technology and get their feedback. So if you could, Dr. Ingerson, give us an idea of where the idea for IMS technology came from to be implemented with a prosthetic end user. Well, thank you very much. First of all, I mean, Ester has always been on the forefront of technology in prosthetics and, and in orthotics. And our aim to increase people's mobility has been caught up in, from, of course, from a simple voting stick into Variflex, if I may say so, uh, for uh, increasing mobility, into uh, the upgrade in technology, which we introduced in 2005, the first bionic solutions is artificial intelligence. Those instruments, they actually sense, they think, and they act. But, in a way, they act one step behind. It's good, they adapt to the surroundings. So we came to, to a thought, how can you actually connect the brain to the prosthetic device? Because that connection is lost. That's how it came along, and we found out that all these experiments which have been doing, done in the past by trying to shoot through a nerve into a bio instrument were just experimental. We came to the solution, we using the signal from the muscle and take it directly to the prosthetic device. Are you able to tell us exactly how the system works integrated within the muscle tissue and how it translates or interprets the information to function the prosthetic device itself? So basically we use a sensor from the Alfred Mann Foundation. It's a sensor about 2 millimeter wide, 12 millimeter long. And in a small operation you put that inside the muscle. It, it actually picks up the signal. When you think about, you know, an able body walk, you, you walk subconsciously. But uh, someone who's amputated, he needs to watch the steps, so to speak. It picks up the signal when Gummy wants to move his, let's say, dorsiflex is answer. The sensor picks up the potential in the muscle. It is transmitted wirelessly into a cage, which is in the socket of, of the prosthetic leg. And there is a computer who takes the signal into a pose to actually work a prosthetic device. That's how it works. Less is more. And then, of course, your mind is connected. And being that Gumi is the first uh, recipient of this technology, uh, how many users are there currently? And do you foresee this extending out to other prosthetic end users in the future? So uh, in 2013, uh, we operated Gumi and, and another fellow. So we have two users. We're using this technology from day to day. Uh, one is using our proprio, uh, a bionic ankle, and the other one is using the real knee. Uh, the future is bright. We really believe that in cooperation with the Alfred Mann Foundation, we will be able to provide this with our bionic products in, in the future. With other products considered, uh, what other products does OSER currently have this technology working with? And you see that extending out to other products such as uh, osteoarthritic or injury solutions or any other prosthetic devices within OSER now? This technology will be available for our binary devices that we say the Proprio or the new LP4, which is a prosthetic leg, binary leg, a Rioni, and the Powerni. And in our future protein pipeline, all the binary proteins will have an interface which can be controlled by mind. And that's something which we can see in three to five years' time to be reality. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Ingerson. Gumi, your experience as the first time user recipient of this technology, you've obviously had uh, many experiences walking other devices. 
Um, so what is it like having that technology, uh, being one of the first users, and has it done anything differently for you on your day-to-day -day activities? Has it changed anything about your daily routines, your benefits, your outcomes? Yeah, in a way it does, because um, when you're on a prosthetic leg, your muscles deteriorate. So when you start using the muscles again, so you, your muscle growth is better. In my case, it went up two centimeters in diameter. I got more stability. It's easier to walk upstairs and downstairs and up a hill and downhill because you control the, the pitch of, the, of your ankle. There's nothing to do it. So you, you use less power. You have more stamina in walking. So in a way, it get, gave me better stability. Uh, one thing I noticed, and it's not uh, maybe uh, scientifically proved, is that my phantom pains start to, get, start to get less and less phantom pains. It's like I was fooling my brain that I had an ankle that I was moving myself. And uh, so in a way, yeah, it has improved my walking ability and my stamina and everything. Okay. And is there anything you do different walking with a mind control prosthesis as compared to a conventional prosthetic device? Uh, everything from getting in out of a chair, walking up and down stairs, walking on ramps or grades or certain terrain uh, that's different than what you've experienced previously. Yeah, in a way, when you, when you walk on a normal prosthetic leg, it does everything. So you have to think about where am I putting my foot. It took me a little while, but I got, my brain got too used to it. So when I'm walking up a hill, it's basically a, it's like a normal. I don't have to basically think about it, it just happens. So yeah, it is. So in a way, you, when you're walking up a stairs, you have to always see where your foot is. But with this, is your mind is telling you, oh, you need to lift up the toe, so you do it. So when you go off this foot into a normal leg, you still try to move your toe and nothing happens, but your brain starts to think, it's, oh, something has happened, but then you look down and nothing has happened. And that's the strangest thing about walking on a normal leg compared to this one. So basically when you're walking, in the first you start to think about it, but as it goes along, you it, it basically goes all to autom automatic when you're walking up and down the hills or down the stairs or over a different terrain. And, it's much easier and nicer. So one day I will hope it was, will be just automatic. I might just add to this, but, uh, we have maybe the best uh, one of the expressions to this is to, when you walk, you walk with not a strain, but you need to think about each step, so to speak. The brain, <coughs> the mind control prosthetics also connect the mind to the binary device, so you actually think you will walk subconsciously as an able body. And by that, you will learn what, that's a, a medical term we call brain plasticity. It's actually learned into it. So it just grows to be a part of Gunnar's body. It's the next step in bionics, and we tend to call it humanics because we want to take the next step to be fully of control of our prosthetics. Basically. Thank you both. Gumi, we'd like to see you demonstrate uh, your functionality and what you can control with the prosthesis. Could you, simple, quick maneuver, just lift the prosthetic device off the floor, plantar flex and dorsiflex the foot. And so you get full range of motion there and you can stop it at any point as well, correct? Yeah. And so even with uh, changing footwear, uh, the current proprio, there has to be a program put in to change heel height. That's something you don't have to manage anymore either. Uh, and simply walking up and down stairs, uh, pre-positioning of the foot is accommodating. It's not waiting for the sensors to receive the input from the environment. It's responding immediately with you. Same thing with walking up and down ramps. Uh, yeah. Traditionally, the proprio would have to sense that ramp to make the change over a series of steps and taking in consideration of programming how to respond to that environment, whereas you are able to change it immediately yeah. for the accommodation. So so, so basically when you're going up a hill, you have to wait maybe two steps for the proprio to adjust to it. But now I can see the hill and I control the pitch of the foot into a torsion plantar flexion. If I'm going down, it's plantar flexion. If I'm going up, I put it in torsion flexion. I don't have to wait for the foot to do it, I do. And that's the main difference between a proprio and this foot. So basically you are in control. And that's the greatest thing, like, well, you are an able body and you have control over your ankle, so do I. So basically, we are the same, but I have a nicer one. 
Uh, one thing that we do have out, we wanted to demonstrate exiting out of a chair. We talk about dorsiflexing of a foot or the, you know, dorsiflexing to have the foot repositioned closer to the center of mass of the body when it's exiting out of a chair. Would you be able to demonstrate that for us? Sure. So, when I usually sit down, I just, I like to put in a small dorsiflexion. That's just me. So I just put in small, and I sit down. And then, if I'm like this, I just put in plantarflexion. And you can oh. relax the foot slightly, and then dorsiflex for exit. Very nice. Thank you very much. And I'm not thinking about it. It just happens. In the first, I, if I may, in the first, I had to think about it, what I was doing, because I had lost my limb about 11 years ago, so I was not used to it. And when they, for all the they put my foot on for the first time, and I started to move my ankle, it was a little surreal. So basically, it was emotional for me to all of a sudden move my ankle. I'm not moving a prosthetic ankle. I'm moving my ankle. So uh, it took me about 10 minutes to learn it a bit, you know, to get it used to it. But in the months or the years I've been, it's so easy to go up a hill or up the steps and down, down the steps. And it's just amazing. So there you go. Thank you, Gimme. That's very good. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the interview with uh, Dr. Ingerson and Gumi Olofsson. Uh, we'll be around for the day. Feel free to ask us questions, and we'll touch back with you. And we're going to be doing another session this afternoon. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.